Uh, right now, though, we've been talking about John Motson. We were just talking to Jim White. We talked to Alan McCoy this morning. Um, another legendary figure has entered the studio. He is Paul Hawksby from uh, Hawksby and Jacobs. Paul, very good afternoon Hi, to you. Hi, Mike. John Watson, a man who everybody in our business knew pretty well, I think, because he'd been around for that long, mm. that at some point or other, almost everybody probably met him. You worked with him as well. Yeah. Um, an amazing figure, really, wasn't he? He just kind of, when you see the number of World Cups that he covered, the number of Cup finals, I'm looking at um, clips on TV of various goals, like the Ricky Villa goal. Sure. Um, and it sort of takes you back, doesn't it, to your youth well in my case not that not that young but you know uh, it takes you back to the moment you were watching it the missed penalties you know yeah. the anguish of the managers the fans it's almost like he's a one man sort of history machine yeah we were lucky to work with myself mm. and andy we were approached here motty when he retired from commentary on the beeb uh, he was approached by talk sport yeah. to come in on a monday and a friday right. and we would look back on the weekend yes, and I look ahead to that, yeah. and we'd get together a couple and they were real kind of pinch yourself moments mm. I remember the first couple but myself and andy knew motty yeah. he was a massive racing fan as was well he? Yeah. used to see him at cheltenham every year mm. and with his great friend gary newborn who's yeah, so school friend gary, yeah, yeah amazing and we we used to meet Motti a couple of times a week. There was that same attention to detail. It was mm. lovely to be part of this kind of second act, this couple yes. of seasons when he wanted to keep active. And, and he was and, sort of encyclopedic with his knowledge yeah, as well, wasn't he? He like was. Like a lot of those kind of guys. I mean, he would soak all this stuff up by osmosis, but mm. we saw Andy and I, the, the preparation, he put an awful lot of prep into mm. it. He'd never want to come on air and be underprepared. Yes. But, uh, I mean... Yeah, Jim said that he recalled a, a story where he would love nothing more than to watch some very sort of... Um, incredibly difficult cup tie for a, for a team of sort of amateurs and there'd be a guy uh, who was a postman he loved that and he would say you know he's delivered a great cross you know yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. just really clever you know he, he never he told me that he never uh, rehearsed those lines yeah. you know crazy gang but the yes. culture club he said this came off with that yeah yeah, yeah they were, I, I like that though because i think you can script things a bit too much can't yeah. you i mean we all sit around and plan shows and do tv and radio and all the rest of it but i always find the most kind of um, enjoyable stuff is, is the off-the-cuff kind of unprepared things. Yeah, yeah. It always sounds better, doesn't it? Yeah, he was... Uh, I mean, and he kind of spanned a generation. I mean, there was no real co-commentators co no. when he first started off. And for the first six years of his career, really, after the famous Ronnie Radford goal, mm. that, that was his sliding doors moment. Yes. It, was, it was a nothing game yeah. that Newcastle was supposed to win easily. Mm. They didn't, and that and that was huge for yes. Matty. But he only ever did highlights. It wasn't mm. until the 1977... FA Cup that he did his first live game. Wow. Hard to believe, isn't it? It is amazing, isn't it? Because how do you prepare for that, I wonder? Yeah. You know, your first actual He said he was incredible. I remember Because it's one of those things that, you know, as you say, they now have a sort of commentator and a co-commentator yeah. who does a sort of colour and all that sort of thing. And as much as I can talk for Britain, I don't think I could ever get anywhere near a commentating job. There's no, no. chance. I was well, a bit like I once was asked to read the news and it was so bad. <laughs> People were going, why is Michael Caine reading the news? Because there is an art to it. And the same with Absolutely, commentators, Absolutely, yeah. There? And that period that went from just the commentator to the co-commentator, mm. you had people like Trevor Brookin, Mark Lawrence yes. and Graham Lasso, he worked with Bobby Charlton. Right. But then that role changed. Co-commentators had a lot more to say. And he, used to, he told me a story once about Jimmy Hill. Mm. And when they used to have one microphone. So it wasn't two mics, right. one for the co-commentator. Right. One for, so once you gave, once Jim got the, <laughs> once Jimmy got the microphone off, yeah. him, you couldn't get you it out of him back. again. And I think I remember that, hearing him telling that yeah, story. Fighting, fighting over the mic. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. You're on this afternoon once again. We are. Uh, one yeah. o'clock. I mean, so Andy, and I, Andy and I have got some really great memories of him. Mm. A bit, I think a celebration of a of a brilliant career and an amazing life, really. Yes. So we'll we'll bring on some people to the show to sort of talk about their memories of him. But yeah. I think you know, I, I I kind of think of him with a with a smile, really. So yes. we'll 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 I tell a few Motty War stories. He is today. like an awful lot of those people. One, uh, you know, some, nobody's got anything bad to say about him. Everybody's mm. got good things to say. Uh, Paul, thank you very much indeed. No.